The range slider allows the user to pick two values from a range of values. And we want to look here at different variants of our range slider. So we want to change the shape, the size and also the colors. If you are new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's get started by changing the colors of our ranged slider. First of all, you go to your state and here you create an object range values and then you need to supply here two values. And these both values are later the selected value on the left side and the selected value on the right side. Then we go to our build method and here we create a range slider. And inside of this slider, you need to set then the values. Next to it, you also put here the min and max value inside. And the min value is then this value on the left side, which is zero. And on the right side, we have then 100. And lastly, we need to implement this on change handler. And here we basically get a values object of this type of range values. And this basically means if we change here the value of our range slider, then we get every time a new object with these both values. And this object which we get, we save then within our state inside of this range values object. To update your UI, you also need to wrap it inside of a set state. And now we have here this range slider and you can change on both sides the value. Next, we also want to set here this overlay on top where we display our number on both sides. And therefore you have within your range slider this property labels. And here inside you can set two strings, first of all the left label and also the right label. And I start here with the left label where I put our values dot start inside. This is basically the value of the left side and we simply convert it to a string. And we also do the same thing for the right side where you access it by values dot end. And this is the value of this right side. And then you also convert it to a string. And to make this labels work, you also need to set up here these divisions and I set it to 20. And now if we change here the selection, then you also see on top this number every time. Now we also want to change the color of our range slider. And therefore you have here inside the property active color. And this is basically the active color, which you see here right now in this blue. And we change it to red. And you also have the inactive color, which is here on the left side and also on the right side. And here I put it basically to this inactive color of this red with some transparency. And now you see that we have here on both sides these inactive color, which is reddish and also on the left side. We can also duplicate now our slider so that we have a second slider. And within the second slider, we remove our active color and our inactive color. To change the color of our range slider, we can also wrap here around the slider scene data or also around your column. And therefore, I simply put here the slider seam inside and then we create a new slider seam data. First of all, we want to change the color of our dots on the left side in our inactive state. And also here on the active state, we have also these dots. Therefore, you have within your slider seam data this active tick mark color property. And here I set then the color to transparent. And now you see that our ticks within our active track are not visible anymore. And we also want to do the same thing for our inactive track. And therefore you have here this property inactive tick mark color and I also set it to transparent. And now you can see that we have here on the left and on the right side no ticks anymore. Next we want to change here the color of our slider and also our inactive color on the left and on the right side. Therefore you have here the property active track color and I set it here to the color of green. And now you see that our track color changed its color to green. And secondly, we also have here the property inactive track color. And here I set it to a grayish color. And then you see that the inactive color on the left and on the right side also changed. We also want to change here our sum color and therefore you have here this property sum color. And I set it here to a green without any transparency. And now you see that also our sump has here this green color. And our slider scene data is right now only working for this top slider, however not for this slider. And this is because in the other slider we have set here this active color and the inactive color. And if you remove it, then the slider is again working with our scene. 
and now you see we have here this green slider. Otherwise, if you put here this active color and inactive color inside, then our seam is simply ignored. Now we also want to look at how we can change the size of our sliders, how we can change the shape and also how we can add some labels to our sliders. And by the way, if you want to get here this whole source code of this application, you can get it with the first link in the description and with the second link you can get access to my Flutter courses where I teach you how you can become a better and more efficient developer. To change the size of your slider, you can simply wrap your range slider inside of a size box and then you can set here the width of your slider. And now you see that this slider has here 200 pixels in width. And secondly, you can also change the height of your slider. Therefore, you simply wrap your slider inside of the slider seam. And here inside, you need to set a track height and I set it here to 10. And now you see that our track height changes here to 10 pixels. If you like, you can also change the sum size and therefore you have here this property range sum shape and here inside you need to set then this radius and I set it right now to 15. And now you see that our sum here gets bigger on the left and also on the right side. If I click now on the sum, you see some shadow around and this is also what you can change. And therefore you have here within your slider seam data the property overlay shape and here inside you can basically set the radius of the shadow and I set it here right now to 30. And now you see that the shadow size increased and if I put it here for example to 50, then you see that even more shadow size is around our sump. Let's also look at how we can add labels to our range slider so we can add it on top of our range slider or to the left and to the right side. Let's get started by adding some label to the left and also to the right side. To accomplish this, you simply wrap your range slider inside of a row and then you also need to put your range slider inside of an expanded widget. And with the expanded widget, the slider tries to get the maximum width it can get. And secondly, we add here to the beginning of our slider a label and there we simply put then the minimum value of our slider inside. And therefore I have created here this field minimum and it is also going inside of our range slider inside of this minimum field. And we also do the same thing after our slider. So here we also add a label and here we put then our maximum value inside. And this maximum value is then also going inside of our range slider. And lastly we simply create this build site label. And therefore I simply create here a container with a text and inside of it we simply want to display here this value and therefore I put here this value inside and convert it to a string. And this is all what we need to display here on the left and on the right side our minimum and maximum value so that the user gets some hint about the range of the data. Now we also want to create some labels on top of our slider. And therefore we create here this range values values bottom field and this contains then the index of the left and on the right side. So basically we are not storing here anymore the values directly inside, we are storing here the index inside. And to make it more clear you simply create a list of your labels and here you put then all the text inside which should be displayed on top of your slider. And this time we select here our values by the index, so this means if we have the index 0, then this value is selected. If we have the index 1, then the 18 is selected. And if we have the index 2, then the 30 is selected and so on. Therefore, let's create right now the min and max values. And these are also indices. So first of all, we put here this minimum value inside. And here by default, the minimum value is the first value. And we also want to get our maximum index. And this is basically here this last index of our list. And to get our maximum value, we simply go here over our labels.length, which is here the list of our strings, and we subtract it by one. And for our divisions, we simply subtract here our maximum minus the minimum value, and we convert it to an integer. Now that we have completed our setup for our slider, we also want to display here on top of the labels. And therefore I simply wrap here around our range slider this column and on top of it we simply want to create a container and within this container we create a row where we want to display all of our labels which we have here within this list. 
And therefore I have created here this utils method with which we can go over all of our labels and then we get from each label the index and also the label text. And if you want to get the source code of this method you can also get it with the first link in the description. Now we also want to get here the color of our labels and therefore always the active state has here this black color and the inactive state has this gray color. And therefore I create here in our function this boolean field is selected and here we basically test if our index is bigger than the selected start value and secondly we also check here if our index is in the range of the values bottom end. And with this statement we basically check if our label which we are currently drawing is inside of the selected state here. And now we want to choose here depending on this is selected state our label color and therefore I create here a new field color and if our label is selected then we want to have here the selected color otherwise the unselected color. And therefore I simply create here two fields first of all the selected color which is here this color black for our label and this is here then the selected state and secondly we create here this unselected color and this is then this grayish color for our unselected state on the right side. And now that we have determined the color of our label, we simply need to draw it on our screen. And therefore I simply create here a new method build label and here inside I put then the label text and also the color inside. And within this build label method, we basically return then a text and here we basically display then this label and we also put here some textile inside and then we also give this textile the color which we have selected before. And now if I hot reload you see we have here on top the labels and also the label are here in the black color or in the grayish color which we have defined here with this property. And also if we change here the selection then also our label color changes. And at the end we also want to create here within our slider some stops and we also want to change here the size of our sump. To change the style of our slider, we simply wrap here around our range slider this class custom slider theme. And here within our custom slider theme, we have then the child property, which is our slider. And around it, we want to wrap our slider theme. And here inside, we first of all set the height of our slider. And I set it here to 5 pixels. Secondly, you can also change here the active and the inactive color of your slider and therefore I simply put here these two colors inside, the active color and also the inactive color. And within your slider theme, you put then the inactive color inside, so we define here the track color which is inactive. And now you see our slider has here this grayish color. And secondly, we also modify our active color and therefore you set here basically the sum color and also the active track color. And I set it here to a different color which is then this red color. And with this setup we only need to put here also the stops inside and also change the size of our sump. Therefore I create here at the top first of all a radius for our sump and also for the stops in between. And then you go to your slider seam data and here you can change the range sum shape and here inside you put then the sump radius which is here this 14. And now if I hot reload you see that the sump is bigger and we also can add here some stops therefore you simply add this range tick mark shape and here inside you put then the tick mark radius inside which has here the value of 8. And now if I hot reload you see that we have here the stops in between which have the value of 8 and if you like you can also change it so for example I put it now to a value of 12 and now our stops here get bigger and you also can change here this sump radius size so I also make it bigger and then you also see that the sump is bigger. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter and see you soon, bye!